Un coup de cœur. On peut me dire que je suis un peu plus de temps. 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 Oui, merci, Monsieur le Président. Excusez-moi, Monsieur le Co-Procureur. Juste avec votre autorisation, Monsieur le Président, je souhaiterais formuler une courte requête. Je vous remercie. Euh, je souhaitais euh, demander au nom de l'équipe de Kyosan de Kyosan pouvoir avoir la possibilité Kyosan de répondre à, euh, au, à la présentation des documents clés par euh, les coprocureurs euh, et euh, les co-avocats des parties civiles lundi matin. Étant précisé que euh, j'ai discuté avec mon confrère de l'équipe du nom de Chéa qui m'indique qu'il n'entend pas présenter de euh, documents euh, clés, euh, ce qui voudrait dire qu'en tout état de cause, euh, le, nous ne prendrions pas plus de temps que prévu pour les réponses de la défense et que euh, l'audience la, pourrait se poursuivre normalement euh, à, comme vous l'aviez prévu euh, dans le cadre de la planification initiale. Euh, je précise que cette demande est simplement faite pour que ce soit, euh, la réponse soit plus structurée avec euh, les ERN précis euh, en réponse euh, aux documents présentés par les procureurs euh, avec également d'autres parties euh, de documents euh, présentés par les procureurs qui seront utiles euh, dans le cadre de notre réponse. Donc euh, voilà la courte requête que je souhaite formuler euh, compte tenu de euh, l'agenda de la Chambre. Merci. Oui, merci, Monsieur le Président. Pour que les choses soient parfaitement claires, je comprends que les deux équipes de défense ne présenteront pas de documents clés. Je voudrais aussi savoir si l'équipe de la défense de Nunchea, dont on a compris qu'elle ne présenterait pas de documents clés, entend faire des commentaires sur les documents qui ont été présentés par les coprocureurs et par les coavocats principaux pour les participants. Um, no, we will not, uh, Judge Levin. Uh, អន្តរជាតិកាលពេលដីលោកគឺសម្ភោនក្នុងការដោយខ្លួនធ្វើការថាតិបាយទៅលើមណ្ដាអេកសារដែលដាក់បង្ហាញដោយភាគីសហប្
Your Honours, uh, just firstly, we're wondering whether, um, and we don't expect an answer now, whether you envisage that the prosecution would reply to um, Q San Pan's response. Um, would be, uh, useful to know that at some point today, if replies are expected or, or not. <coughs> Your Honours, um, we uh, intend to stick to the schedule that you set in terms of timing for the key documents and presentations. Um, the prosecution um, has provided a list to the senior legal, legal officer on the 25th of August um, last week of the documents they wanted to bring to Your Honour's attention. On that list, we had documents for the 1st of January Dam, Chapang to My Dam and Camp Hong Chanung Airport. Um, certainly, uh, in relation to Camp Hong Chanung Airport, or airfield construction site, um, we won't uh, have enough time fully to present those documents. However, I will um, summarise um, the content of the remainder of the documents uh, which we would like uh, Your Honours to um, consider. And um, we would also ask that uh, that list that we provided to the Chamber uh, be something as a, as a useful guide of documents that we think are um, important in demonstrating the crimes that occurred and, um, at Camp Hong Chanang Airport and also um, the involvement of um, uh, the leaders of the airport site in, in purges. So if I can briefly summarise um, the documents that I would like your honours to take aware of. First, um, this morning, we presented some documents in relation to Su Met, commander of uh, Division 502, responsible for the airfield. We presented some correspondence that he had with DOIC. The, um, the chairman of S21, um, the torture and killing centre there. And to show that the Su Met was actively involved in uh, the purge of uh, military personnel. The other documents that would help demonstrate that, um, letters from or, uh, um, Letters, documents, telegrams from Sumet to Doik. We would like your honours to take into account to support that proposition. That's E3 1054, and that's dated the 1st of June 1977. Second document, E3 9381. It also appears in the form of E3 1050, and that's dated the 2nd of June 1977. Then E3 1141, dated the 28th of July 1977. E3 1040, dated the 10th of August 1977. E3 8385, dated the 4th of October 1977, and E3 1087, dated the 3rd of October 1977. These are all documents, in addition to the other ones that were sort of read out more completely this morning, that um, a correspondence from Sumet to Doik, either sending people to S21 from uh, various divisions, or alternatively, requesting information from Doik as to what um, detainees at S21 had said about other members of, of uh, his division or um, other um, RAK members that he was able to investigate. The, the, those documents show that um, Sumet was actively participating in purging, in particular um, killing of subordinates and other army personnel without any legal justification. Um, now, either from the Camp Chang airfield and or from other places. Uh, they support the witness testimony the purging of workers, the killings, disappearances, re-educating and refashioning at the airfield by Division 502, of which testimony you've heard recently. The second group, or the second 
two documents we would like to refer to your honours that demonstrate um, the purging of Division 710 and at the airfield. Your honours will remember Division 710 in terms of the, the numbers of people at the airfield that did not appear on an inventory of the RAK um, in 1977, but clearly from this document, um, contemporaneous document, it's E31182, dated the 6th of July 1978, from Ung Reng to the General Staff, RAK General Staff, it clearly shows that um, um, certainly significant numbers of Division 710 were working at the airfield and there was an active um, active role in, uh, in purging um, that division, certainly in general terms, in that document. And that's dated July, the, July 1978. And then, Your Honours, uh, that, that record or that document we submit um, would read well with E3-369, which is a written record um, of interview uh, with the Office of the Crown Investment Judges of a Division 170 uh, Regiment Commander who is in fact present at uh, the airfield and gives um, evidence of um, the crimes and, and the purges there. Uh, thirdly, um, a third document demonstrates a different idea, and this idea is particularly in relation to um, the idea of enslavement, the fact that um, soldiers slash workers, um, whether or not they had the ability to leave the airport or whether they were detained within those uh, grounds um, as, as large as they were. And that document is E3-1094 dated the 4th of August 1978 from Office 41, that's in the West Zone, addressed gen generally to Ankar, and it talks about um, a number of incidents uh, in July where um, detainees or soldiers or workers escaped from the airport and they were arrested on different occasions and they were perceived or viewed to be as enemies for doing so. It also, um, that document further talks about um, the importance of taking measures, security measures, having soldiers um, more heavily guard the perimeter of the airfield to stop those escapes from occurring again. And, and that, um, we submit, is relevant to this whole issue of whether or not uh, people sent to the airfield uh, had freedom of movement, were they enslaved to the extent that um, they were unable to, to leave. And then perhaps the fourth the fourth and last sort of group of documents that um, would like your honours to look at and consider in light of all of the evidence. And, and they are the documents that uh, relate to uh, what actually happened to um, West Zone, um, sorry, East Zone detainees that were taken to the airfield as a result of a, a massive purge of that zone. What actually happened to them when um, the Vietnamese came and the airport was abandoned? Uh, Your Honour has heard some testimony of that, but also today Your Honours have heard um, a document uh, read out to you talking about um, or discussing or providing evidence of some of those East Zone soldiers um, being executed near Ramayas uh, railway station, which is about 20 kilometres from, from the airfield. Um, there are two witnesses that give very specific evidence uh, in this regard, in addition to what Your Honours have heard, and that's E3-7893. Um, and that witness talks about his observations of the massacre at the Tikos Pagoda. Um, and another witness, which is uh, near Ramayas uh, town, train station, a few kilometres away. And another witness that talks about another massacre, um, E37894, a massacre at an old fort. 
which is in in the other direction uh, from the Romaeus uh, train station, but both talk about um, massacres and executions of East Zone um, soldiers that, were, that fled the airport when, when the Vietnamese arrived in the area, and they discuss how they were um, tricked to. Uh, to come and, and line up and, and uh, be armed to fight the Vietnamese. And once those identifications were made clear, um, they were executed. Uh, Your Honours, the prosecution is well aware that um, the accused aren't charged with those uh, executions because they appear, they occurred, it appears that they occurred after the um, uh, the temporal jurisdiction of this court. Uh, and so we're not asking your honours to, to make any findings or use, it, uh, use that evidence to, to prove those facts, but clearly that's, um, that's not possible, nor is the case. But we do ask your honours to think about that evidence when you're thinking about um, were those East Zone uh, detainees or workers, were they being persecuted? at uh, the Camp Hong Chenang airfield. And so evidence of, um, evidence of um, how they were treated after, uh, we would say, is relevant to your determination of whether or not they were treated um, in a persecu persecutionary manner um, whilst they were at the airport. And uh, we would submit that evidence, um, that ev evidence is not barred, but certainly no findings of fact as to um, the accused um, uh, guilt in relation to those massacres. We understand that. You want to just to finally conclude, in short, the documents presented today demonstrate that as Division 502 were managing the building of the airfield in order to defend themselves from outside enemies, and clearly that was um, Vietnam and other foreign powers. They were simultaneously killing, re-educating and refashioning some of the builders of the airfield that they believed were enemies in order to de defend themselves uh, from internal enemies. The documents presented show that the um, RAK, including the command of Division 502, believed that the internal enemies were in fact a greater threat than external enemies. They demonstrate that the RAK, Division 502 leadership, which was responsible for the construction of the airfield, viewed that this dual approach of building whilst purging was neither contradictory nor self-defeating. So, Your Honours, that concludes uh, the presentation on Kang Hong Chenang. I think we hand the floor to, uh, ask Your to hand the floor to the civil parties. I believe they have five or ten minutes to present some documents on this area. អរគុណជាបន្តរិទ្ធិសម្ដល់បិទកាជនទៅក្រមសហមិត្តវីនាំមុខតំណាងដើមដឹងរាប់ឥវិនីបាទសូមអរគុណលោកប្រធានសូម
รู้เรนไอกาบอกกอดคือไอกาาอีบเลือกาวประมวยกาวบุญให้เข้มสมจุดเรียบทาลกรูเรนนี่ลูกตระบันเกยกตัวทัวตอมในกองปลปรำปีรอยใบทำไมประจำในติกรงหนุ่มปิ้งหายกรอยมกตระบันบรรจุนตัวทัวการในประเด็นยนต์ฮะขาดกบุชนังหายได้ในกองนุกยมสมดอกสร้างสมรองในปีสมตังครูนจิตดำดังรถวิญญาณวากรได้เมียนอีออเอ็นจีพีสายขมายคือโซนโซนสามประมุยหาซับสายสับประมุยจีพีสายอังคลีโซนโซนสามสับประมุนแปดใบสายบุญอีออเอ็นจีพีสายบารังคือโซนโซนกายซับกายปรมใบสายมุ้ยได้ขยมสมดอกสองโดยต่อเตยฉน้ำมุ้ยป้อนปรมบุญรอยเจ็ดสับปรมปีเก็บบรรจุขยมเตยทั่วประเลียนยนต์ห่อใครกับผู้ฉน้ำดาวยกเตยวิ้ยมาพนมจังยบจังทั้งไงขยมตรึเนตินุรหดดอลจงชนะมมาป้อนประบุนรอยเจ็ดสับประบายสารเพียบเป็นนุเมียนมนุสลับจันนะสลับดอยดอยอดบายคลาเตียตรึองค์การยกเตอสำหรับเจ้าเมันอาแกนนี้บานลอยจำปุ๊บดำบันดงรถวินิจีปีได้จีไอกษาได้ขยมแต่กษาจงกล่าวบอกขยมสำหรับประเด็นยนต์ฮะใครกับปูชนะงคือดำบันดงรถวินิได้เมียนชมูธาชายเฮียบไอกษาบอกกอดคือเลยอีบเลอหกบุญมาเพิ่มเปิลเอได้ดำบันดงรถวินิรุกนี่แต่ปีตำบงกอดรู้นึกแค่กำปุงทมนึกคุมสระเยื่อสระกำปุงสวายปัจจุบันนี่สระสตงแสนกลายมกกอดตระบันนอมอ้อยโจนึกนงกองปุลใบรอยดับได้เจ้าได้เมียนกองกุมารมวยเด็กน้องนุ๊กหายกองปูนี้ในตีกรงพลุ่มปิงแต่กอดบรรเจาะเด็กน้องไอกษัตริย์บอกว่าท่านนุ๊กมุกมาดมมุกบนตีเป็ดกาละแมดหายได้กอดตระบันเกี่ยวไอทัวร์เจเนียชิบานเนี่ยปุ๊บนตีมันตีเป็ดนุกฟองได้กลายมกกอดตระบานเก๋บรรจุนตัวประเลียนยุนฮอคคาดกับผู้ชนะโดยชนะขยมสมดอกสร้างสมร้องอีออันบอกกอดเออสมร้องบอกกอดอเมริกาอันโดยต่อเตยอีออันจีพีสายขมายโซนโซนฮาสประบดอกพรำมาเพย์ประบุนมันมีนอีออันจีพีซาอังคลีหรือจีพีซาบารังตีโดยเช่นยมสมอันสมร้องโดยต่อเตยกล้วยปีนุมีนปฏิกาจับสาวเพิ่มขันบนต่อปีนุเติบเกบัญชูนขยมเติบเฟอร์ประเลียนยนฮ
nơi cầm phong chân năng ca nghĩa đại khí nhóm thuế cư xóm ạt xóm rắm nơi còn lại xong bởi liền bị xì mong sau đó đồng nằm khí nhóm trời cao tăng bì mong bay rư buôn giúp sau đó nằm còn khí nhóm tay tay bắt mà nụ khi ông ở đăng thá bắt tờ nà tì Ní cư chí ai kia xa chùm luôn phí Đã khi ông ai bằng hành bán bẹp bọn tờ nâng Bà liên dân hò khá cực phùng chân năng Đã ai kia xa ní nì dây ông phí Ca nghe rồi bỏ đàm bà đăng rốt về nì Nâu bà liên dân hò khá cực phùng chân năng Nâng đình dây ông phí Thà ta ở vây quạt bàn khơn chùm phùng ca bà bật tờ lơ Nẹ đợt tây tiết nâu khá cực phùng chân năng bạn ở nhóm xung và chạy ở làng vĩnh trong phút ai cả xa Tì mũi và hai chạy nhóm bàn ăn ở chỗ lắm Cứ ai cả xa đã miên lệch y ổ ấn Ờ đã miên lệch y bấy lơ sai sắp vào mũi cao buồn Đại chạy ai cả xa đã bỏ đầm ở đồng rộn với nhí chú mua rũ rền Xung ổ khuôn lục bà thiền Ở khuôn, ở chìa bà tổng nếch bắt đầu bên cả chuyện tự cầm Nam nào sạp đi nhá, nam ấy mình to các đạo bằng hai Anh cả sạp con nước cho bọc luôn Thank you, Mr. President, and good afternoon to your honors and to council As your honors are aware, I will be continuing with the Trapyong Trapyong Tamaa Dam version of the presentation and uh, the first document I'd like to draw your attention to is E3 slash 771. Uh, this document is an issue of Revolutionary Youth Magazine. It's dated July, August 1977. And it's an interesting document because it contains several pages related to the Trapiang Tama Dam project. The relevant ERNs are 00-50-9685-87 in English, 00-37-6343-88. And the first thing I would draw your attention to is that this document contains an extremely detailed description of the project. It also gives a start date in February 1977, and it indicates that after a building period in 1977, construction will continue in the dry season of 1978. And I'll just read those parts now uh, to give a flavor for the document. Quote, Brothers began this work site on 16 February 1977. At the beginning, Brothers start the construction of the dam from Trapiang Tma in the northwest direction, building it through the field of Trapiang Tma toward Punle Mountain, uh, which is 8,480 meters long. Uh, On the other side, uh, brothers start from Trapping Tama in the east direction, going by Poi Ta'ong uh, village, uh, turning uh, northward uh, behind uh, Poi Pongro uh, village, and then eastward to reach uh, Suong Lake. Uh, and from the Suong Lake, it goes north uh, to the plain uh, of Suong Lake, uh, and Khan Kut Forest to reach Khaun Klang Mountain. And this line is 14,800 meters long. In total, the dam of the Trapping Tma Water Reservoir is 20 kilometers long, 5 meters high, 40 to 70 meters wide at the bottom, and 7 to 8 to 10 meters wide at the top. Down from the dam, brothers dig three big canals. Each is 12 meters wide on the top, 6 meters wide at the bottom, and 1 to 2 meters deep. The first canal 
starting from the first water gate of the reservoir down to Rumdol River is over 20 kilometers long. And then it continues with a description of the second and third canals, which I won't read. Then the portion about the continuing construction, it says, quote, in the dry season of next year, brothers will strengthen and expand this reservoir bigger and stronger by increasing the height of the dam up to 8 meters, enlarging the bottom to 120 meters wide and the top to 25 meters wide, so it will be able to hold hundreds of millions of cubic meters of water, unquote. And before I continue with this document, I would just note that this description is consistent with the description in the site identification report, which is E3 slash 8050. Now this description is considerably more detailed than the description in the site ID report, but it is consistent. For example, the site ID report states that one arm of the dam is approximately 9 kilometers long, while the other is approximately 13 kilometers long. And that is at English ERM page 0042805, Khmer page 0046472, and French page 0045043. So this portion of this document we submit is relevant to the center's detailed knowledge of the project, um, the scale of the project, and the plans for future construction, future improvements. So I'd like to continue with this document. Um, and the other things to note is that the document says that the dam was constructed in order to achieve the party's plan. And it also discusses the conditions that the workers worked under. And it discusses those conditions in the context of the conditions faced by the Khmer Rouge army during the war against the Long regime. So I'll just read that part part now. It says, quote, during the time of building this Chopping Ma Reservoir, our cooperative male-female youths of the northern sector of Batambong used all of their physical and mental strength and sacrificed everything in order to serve the collective interest and to achieve the party's plan totally and successfully. Brothers worked and stayed at the work site for months. Like what our male-female combatants of the Revolutionary Army had done when they were fighting to destroy the enemy during the war. Brothers fought to dig up and carry the earth all day and night under the burning sun for the entire dry season without any complaining. However, brothers were always happy at work. When the work became harder, brothers were more unified and closely and extraordinarily loved each other. Geographically, there were rarely any lakes or ponds on this plain field. And since there were tens of thousands of people working at the Trapping Tamal Water Reservoir work site, our male-female youths had to face and fight to solve other problems besides their daily core tasks. Obviously, they had to face the problem of water shortage. That was because the carts and trucks were not able to deliver water to the work site on time and as needed. Even in this situation, brothers still had no doubt or did not complain about it. Instead, brothers agreed with a view and stance that our hardship here, whatever it was, still could not be compared to that of our elder padres and male-female combatants of the Revolutionary Army when they were fighting to build the revolutionary forces and bases to destroy the enemy during the underground struggle in the internal war and during the past five years of the Revolutionary War. So this portion we submit is relevant to a number of things. First of all, the, the center's knowledge of the conditions that the workers were working under 
um, uh, that, that the workers were working there in order to achieve uh, the party's plan totally and successfully, and also the scale of the, of the workforce, uh, saying that there were tens of thousands of people working at the reservoir uh, The next document I want to move to is E3300, and this document consists of excerpts from a voice of Kampuchea news broadcast from Phnom Penh. So these excerpts specifically mention the Chapang Tama Dam, and they put the project in the context of the CPK plan as a whole. So I'll read a few quotes in a moment, but first, the relevant ERNs are in Khmer, S00704541, in English, S00702870. And in French, S00603. So this broadcast was celebrating the 22nd anniversary of the founding of the Union of Kampuchean Workers, and that anniversary occurred on the 1st of November of 1977. So I'll just read a few excerpts. First, there's a section entitled, The Collectivist and Private Ownership Systems Are as Different as Day and Night. And in that section, the broadcast said, under the just and far-sighted leadership of the Communist Party of Kampuchea, our people and our revolutionary army, adhering firmly to the position of independence, sovereignty, and self-reliance, established a new collective system, collectivist system, throughout Kampuchea in record time." Unquote. And it then goes on to explain some of what that collectivist system involved. And it says, quote, as regards nation building, under this magnificent collectivist system, the rural areas in democratic Kampuchea have undergone profound transformation and are now entirely different from what they were during the war and before liberation. Water supply projects have been put in place in all the zones, regions, and districts, unquote. And then a bit further down, it gives examples of water supply projects undertaken and it lists the Trapping Tamal Reservoir Project as one of those. So again, uh, the relevance is situating this project uh, in a broader CPK program. Uh, the next document I would like to draw your honor's attention to is E3-18, which is Q Sampan's book entitled Cambodia's Recent History and the Reasons Behind the Decisions I Made. And the relevant ERNs here are 0010-3780 in English, 0010-3780 3878 in Khmer, and 0059 5487 in French. And I highlight this document only to draw your attention to the fact that Hugh Sampan discusses seeing the Trapping Tamal water reservoir at some point during the DK period between 75 and 79. And he also makes the same point in document E3, excuse me, in document E3 slash 592, which is an open letter from uh, Q Sampon. And in that document, he says the following, quote, in addition, although I traveled very little in the years between 1975 and 79, I saw with my own eyes some achievements which I had long wanted to have, such as irrigating the countryside by channeling water from Trapang Tamal water reservoir in Omsrup district, Bantie, Mianche province, and Kamping, Kampong Pui water reservoir east of Batambong province, and the endless rice paddy shaped in a checkerboard pattern. All of these made me believe in this regime 
uh, and and respect the souls of hundreds of thousands of those who had sacrificed their lives as well as all of our people who are working hard in work sites." Unquote. And the relevance of this, we suggest, is uh, Kyusam Han's knowledge of the project and of its scale. And the ERN page for that document, English 2803, The next document I'd like to turn to is E3-178, which is a weekly report of the Sector 5 Committee from May 1977, and specifically it's dated 21 May 1977. It's addressed to the Zone Secretary and to M5-6, and it contains <coughs> it contains a number of pieces of information relevant to the Chapin Tamar Dam work site. The first portion that I'd like to read is entitled About the Reservoir. And it says the strategic water reservoir in Chapin Tamar. Um, the construction of the water gates for the three major directions are being continued. Uh, that is, the construction of the lower part will be finished in this May. The construction of the upper part will be finished later on. The water dam and water gates at Chung Cross the 23-kilometer canal that connects from the first water gate of Chapin Tamar to Anlong Sar River, whose upper mouth is 12 meters, the low bottom is 6 meters, the depth is 1 meter, has been completed. So this portion is, is relevant to, to two things. First, uh, reporting from the sector level upward and also the future construction plans where it says the construction of the upper part will be finished later on. And that passage is at English page 0034, 2719, Khmer page 0027, 5596, and French page 0062, 3317. So the second thing I want to mention in this document is that it describes what it characterizes as attempts to sabotage the project, which it attributes to 17 April people. And I'll read that portion now. Quote, by searching and finding the traitors, the 17 April elements from Phnom Penh, who have prepared a plan to destroy our water reservoir, by searching and realizing the enemy's trick in which they have hidden the tools, such as hoes, knives, saws, axes, etc. They have waged this trick in order to prevent us from using the tools. And if we mobilize or appoint them to work, they would allege that there were no tools to work with. We have successively searched for and found those who bore insignias and the traitors who were the 17 April elements from Phnom Penh. The examination of their activities are based on their, their confessions of their networks and based on the photographs for which the Ankar has asked to search. Unquote. And that's English page. 0034-2709-5587-5585-5585-5585-5585-5585-5585-5585-5585-5585-5585-5585-5585-5585-5585-5585-5585-5585-5585-5585-5585-5585-5585-5585-5585-5585-5585-5585-5585-5585-5585-5
is trying to promote, quote, trust in the party's plan by trying to sincerely implement all parts of the 77 plan of the party, unquote. And that's at page 0034, 2711 in English, 0027, in Khmer, and 0062, 3307 in French. So again, the, the relevance here is uh, both illustrating the search for enemies related to the, the reservoir project and situ situating, <coughs> excuse me, situating the project in the CPK program as a whole. The next document um, is E3-179, and this is a report from Office 560, dated 29 May 1977, so this document is eight days after the previous document, and it comes from an interview that was an addressee of the previous document. It contains information about a number of the sectors in the Northwest Zone. For Sector 5, it includes the following information. Quote, the building of three sluice gates of Utasas strategic water basin at Trapping is underway and is expected to finish in May. We have completed a canal of 23 kilometers long, one meter deep, with an upper base of 12 meters and a lower base of 6 meters wide, unquote. And those ERNs are English 0018, 3016 to 17, Khmer, and the interesting aspect of this document is that it's six days after the previous document and the, it, it appears to contain a summary of the information in the previous document. The next two documents I want to deal with are from a year later, so May of 1978, rather than May of 1977. Uh, these are telegrams sent by Nguyen to Ankar 870. And the first one is E3-950. And it is dated 11 May. 1978. And Nim starts by writing the following Nhiem to Ankar Quote, I would like to report on general situation and work and zone in the zone in the following. Number one, following my meeting with Ankar, I returned and went to work in regions 5, 3, 1, and 4. On May 10, I met and worked with comrades of the Permanent Organizational Summit During my meeting with them, I reported about the recommendations of 870, and then we reviewed situations in the zone as well, unquote. And then further down in the document, there is a section entitled Planting and Building in All Areas. And within that section, there is a portion that says, quote, water reservoirs in Region 5. Chopping Tamal Water Reservoir has been promoted, unquote. And so the, referen the, the word promoted here uh, in May of 1978, I would just recall that this is from near the end of the dry season in 1978, and therefore it appears to be consistent with the Revolutionary Youth Magazine uh, that we looked at initially. 
Tung Ju Jun So in this telegram, Nim also discusses his cooperation with the Padre from the southwest zone in discussing the food situation. It says, quote, it was said that the entire four districts of Region 5 faced shortage, but I have met with Comrade Wien and proposed to him to review all the harvested rice to see what it lacked, how many months the paddy rice would ripe, and what the rations were, unquote. And finally, at the end of the document, Niem writes, quote, please, Ankar, give ideas and advice, unquote. And the pages that I've quoted from in this document are English, O O one eight five two one five through one eight Khmer zero 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 two one zero four three to four five and French zero zero two nine six two two one to two three. So the relevance of this document in our submission is, uh, first it discusses the trapping and it also illustrates uh, the functioning of the hierarchy uh, in the Northwest Zone in May 78. The second telegram from Niem to Ankar 870 is from six days later. That document is E3 863. And it's dated 17 May 1978. And like the previous one, it's also from Niem to Ankar 870. And in this telegram, Niem again mentions his cooperation with Tarin on food matters. Specifically, he says, quote, but Sector 5 still has a problem with seed shortage for early season rice. I worked with Comrade Green on this problem, asking him to send me 14,000 sacks of rice and seed, of rice seed, so that we can plant them on the whole land areas as planned by him. And that is English page 0032 French 0062 3408 and Khmer 0007 6286. And again, the, the significance of this document is to show the functioning of the hierarchy uh, around the Northwest Zone leader in May of 1978. The next two documents I want to look at both deal with something that has been mentioned quite a few times, and that's the visit of Chen Yong Kui to Cambodia in December of 1977. And the first document is E3-1783. This document is a Xinhua news agency report, so the Chinese press agency. It establishes that the visit occurred in early December 1977, and it also establishes that Chen Yongkui was accompanied on his visit by Pol Pot. It also indicates that Ross Nguyen met with Pol Pot and Chen, Chen Yung Kui and gave them a sort of presentation about the construction of the reservoir, including the fact that the construction was done in response to the call of the party's central committee. And this is what it says specifically. Quote, excuse me, quote, Karmad Nimros, second vice president of the Presidium of the State of Democratic Cambodia, secretary of the Northwest Zone Committee of the KCP, and chairman of the Northwest Zone Serve the People Committee, said that the reservoir was built in less than two months this year by the people of the fifth region of the Northwest Zone in response to the call of the party's central committee to build water conservancy projects in a big way. 
this year, it holds 150 million cubic meters of water. Then, three canals were dug, in a week's time, linking the reservoir, which irrigates over 7,000 hectares of paddy fields. The reservoir is now being expanded. After four years, it will hold 300 million cubic meters of water. And he also talked about the conditions. Uh, Rosnium said, quote, drought set in when we started to build the reservoir, and the 20,000 people engaged in construction even had not enough drinking water. Unquote. And there, the relevant ERNs are English 0049, 8180, Khmer 0065925960, Khmer 0065926960, 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 Khmer 0065926960,
they were impressed with this sea, meaning that the reservoir was big, vast, water as far as the eye can see, nearly 200 million cubic meters. We built it in just one year. So again, relevance is to the duration of construction. Here it's given as one year. <coughs> and also to the scale of the project and the party center's knowledge of the scale of the project. And the relevant ERNs are English 0051-9843, Khmer 0006-4727, and French 0051-9843. That must be a mistake. That's the same as the English ERN. I'll, I'll get the correct French ERN. So I want to turn now to a few written records of interview. And these are relevant specifically to the later conditions and the later period of construction after the Southwest Zone cadres had arrived. And the first one I want to look at in that regard is E319 slash 19.3.33. So in this question, in this uh, WRI at question nine, the witness was asked, what were your responsibilities at Trapping Tamal? And his answer was, quote, I carried dirt and helped build the dam. Ms. Nan was the chief of the Tamalapok district mobile unit, and San was the deputy chief. Both were from the southwest zone. Wong, deceased, was another deputy chief. He was from the northwest zone. Then skipping down a bit in the same answer, quote, Tai Yun, from the southwest zone, was in charge of all of the mobile units and trapping Tamal, unquote. The next question the witness was asked, uh, question and answer 10, he was asked the, the standard question, would you like to add anything else, unquote. And what he said was, quote, I would like to add that life under the Southwest Zone People's Authority was extremely hard because we received an insufficient food supply despite hard work and because they killed a lot of people. Sometimes we had to work day and night, unquote. So the relevance of this is, of course, to conditions under the Southwest Zone, uh, but also Taiyun as one of the successors of Tavong. Uh, the next document in this regard is E319 slash 21.3.5. And the portion I'll be quoting here is answer 27 and 28. Question. You said that you worked in a mobile unit at Ang Ang Traping Tmaw and at the Spian String worksite. Tell us what the living conditions and working situation were. What were they like after the Southwest Padres arrived? Answer. Answer 27. Before the Southwest Padres arrived, they had us dig two to three cubic meters of soil per day. When the Southwest Padres arrived, they had us carry three cubic meters of soil. As for the food rations, it was the same for those who worked in mobile units. There was not enough food to eat. They had us carry soil both day and night before and after the Southwest Cadres arrived. Question. Were the situation and the arrests and killings the same as before the Southwest people arrived? Answer 28. Actually, before the Southwest cadres arrived, arrests and killings were not frequent, but after the Southwest cadres arrived, the arrests and killings of people became more frequent. Unquote. The next document in this regard is E319 slash 19.3.47. And this is question and answer 18. The witness was asked who controlled 
sector 5 mobile unit during the time he worked with the trapping to Ma Dan. And he answered, quote, Taval controlled the sector 5 mobile units that worked at trapping to Ma Dam, unquote. He was then asked about his roles at trapping to Ma Dam, and he said the following, quote, I controlled a 30 member unit. I worked at Trapping Tamal for three months, during which Trapping Tamal Dam was completed before Khmer New Year in 1977. Perhaps in May 1977, the Southwest Group arrived, disbanded the mobile units, and began to arrest the Northwest leadership cadres, such as the chiefs of mobile units and the chiefs of battalions and regiments. I was transferred to work at Khor Gai Daum. Actually, Trapping Tamal Dam was successfully completed except a number of bridges that were still incomplete." Now, earlier in the interview at question 13, he had been asked, could you please describe the living and working conditions under the control of the Southwest Group and the Northwest Group? And he answered, quote, the living and working conditions under the control of the Northwest Group were better than those under the control of the Southwest Group because we had sufficient food. By contrast, under the control of the Southwest Group, things were extremely difficult because we did not have sufficient food. Uh, the next WRI on this point is E319 slash 19.3.24. And this is another witness who worked at the Trapping Tama construction site at the time that he says that M. Chaim arrived in the area in July or August of 1977. And again, the, the question he was asked uh, was, do you have anything to add? And he said the following, quote, I want to add that under the Khmer, under the Khmer Rouge era, under the control of both the Northwest and Southwest people, the living was extremely difficult and we did not receive enough food to eat. And the, the last document I want to deal with on this particular point is E319 slash 21.3.3. Here, in question 103, the witness was asked, you previously said that Taval was the highest ranking leader at Trapping Tamal Dam. After he was arrested, who came to replace him? And his answer was, quote, Tapol came from the southwest zone to replace him, unquote. And then at question 105, the witness was asked of Tapol, was he from the southwest zone? And his answer was, quote, yes, he was. He was vicious. He had crossed eyes, unquote. Later in the interview, he was asked about rapes that he had mentioned in his civil party application. And he said the following, quote, two women, and he gives their names, from Prianet Priya district were medics in my mobile unit. They were taken to be killed by Tapol, who was from the southwest and one of his associates. I did not see this killing firsthand, but the workers in my unit told me that the corpses of the two women were left completely naked, And he then goes on to say that because the corpses had been left naked, he assumed the women had been raped. So the same witness at answers 92 through 94 was asked what life was like after the Southwest group arrived. And he said that living conditions became more difficult. When asked about food, he said, quote, they provided only a single can of rice to be shared between 30 people, and they had us work both day and night, unquote. And at answer 94, he was asked, after the Southwest group took charge, 
what was the situation with di disappearances and arrested and arrests. And he said, quote, yes, more and more people disappeared or were arrested. Mr. President, I'm turning to a new topic now, and I note the time. I don't know if it's a convenient time for a break. บ่าวขอบคุณบารณีดอลลาร์ปีสมรหาให้ประกาศสมรหาจากปี